retail in India, we have 12 million retail outlets. Okay, our GDP is about 1.5 trillion. Let me give you a context. America has a GDP of 14 trillion, 10 times our size. The total number of retail outlets in America is 1 million. So they are, they are 10 times bigger than us, and they have one tenth the number of outlets. So the concentration of outlets there, the concentration power there amongst retailers is very high. That's not true in India at all. Why is this so in India? Retail investment in India is very low. You require very little investment to be in retail. You require absolutely no education. You require no license. And you require very little space. So retail over the last 40 years has become an avenue of employment for the government and everybody else. That's the reason retail is very big in India. Winston Churchill said in 1945 that India is a nation of shopkeepers. Okay? Couldn't have said it better. We have many, many shops, and we continue to flourish with many, many shops. Okay, the basic reason is no license, no education, no investment, no space required. And what does this retailer do? He buys in the morning from the distributor, sells in the afternoon, and pays back tomorrow morning. You cannot get more efficient than that. He's got 300 inventory turns. You know, gurus like Ram Charan will tell you that, you know, 60 inventory turns are very good. 300 inventory turns. Nowhere in the world will you see 300 inventory turns. That's the reason why he's so efficient. Okay, you call him, he delivers. Okay, so that's what happens in retail. This whole concept of 12 million retail outlet, low investment, mom and pop stores everywhere was fantastic for a penetration economy as goods and services were getting more and more into households. Today, it's not really valid for a consumption economy, which is what Kumar spoke about. The consumption economy is a very different game. So one part of this 12 million retail outlets have to start seriously thinking about what does retail mean in a consumption economy? Okay, and I'll touch on some of that. So you will find duality, definitely. You'll find the mom and pop store, you'll find the large format store. You'll find penetration still with small packs, and you'll find consumption happening. In the poorer sec sections of society, a sachet pack delivers both penetration and consumption. That's very unique to India. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Okay, when I used to run the hair care category, I recognized that 40% of consumption was happening because of sachets. Okay, so people buy because it's steady dosage, they know how much they're going to spend. Okay, so both consumption and penetration happen in sachets in India. In most parts of the world, you won't see it. So that's what we're going to see uh, in retail here. Why is retail important? Extremely important to our GDP. A third of our GDP is contributed by retail. The top two sectors in the future will be retail and telecom, even ahead of agriculture. In the next five years, it will be retail, telecom, agriculture, in that order. Okay, so both retail and telecom will be extremely important uh, for two different reasons, uh, but a very significant uh, portion of our GDP. Very important category for the government and everybody. So what will change retail in India uh, looking forward? Uh, what will really you know, happen? One, I believe, technology. Technology will change it dramatically. It's already started. Really. Okay, and again, Kumar spoke about it. Uh, Dinesh also spoke about it. I believe power will need to change significantly. The whole access to power will be very important for retail. Go back to the theory of consumption. Go back to the theory of enjoyment of shopping experience. I believe retail prices have to drop, the space prices. Okay, today, if a retail shop is paying more than 5% of their total cost as rental, it's unprofitable. That's the cutoff for me. So if you go to any retail outlet, ask two big questions. What's your rent per square feet? What's your energy cost per square feet? Energy cost can vary anything from 70 rupees per square foot to 350 rupees per square foot today. Okay, so those are the two dimensions. Anybody who's paying more than 5% of his total cost base in terms of uh, rental, dead, won't work. Okay, he is up for closure. Okay, so I believe that has to change significantly. Otherwise, you will not grow retail uh, in this country. And finally, I believe for a consumption economy or to get people to buy, uh, the whole concept of the shop and the promoter and everybody you need to have a different level of soft skill, a very different level of soft skill. Okay, just saying that this is the packet, so many grams, this is the price, buy it, this is a white toothpaste or a blue toothpaste or a green sari or a you know, white uh, check shirt is not going to do. The soft skill part has to enhance dramatically in Indian retail. And that part we have not really focused on. That will require enormous training, uh, enormous grooming, uh, and many number of institutes, and uh, many, many 
people, big companies wanting to buy into those services. Okay, that part is still, I would say, virgin land or vacant right now in India. But it will develop. There's no doubt about it. Some of the airlines have already started doing it. Okay, if I look at a different category, the airline industry is already doing it. Okay, we, we haven't seen that in retail as yet. Next one, which I believe the future of retail. We talked of food as being very big. If food has to be very big in retail, I believe cold storage has to be very big. This is one area which is linked back to power, which I told you earlier, technology as well as power. Our cold storage fac facilities are absolutely pathetic today. They're not good enough, and nobody has invested in it. That's for a number of reasons, one of them being regulation. The total number of cold storages we have is 5,381. Absolute pittance. Okay, there is no way you can sell meat, poultry, cheese, chocolates, everything in this way, or even milk. If you don't have an effective cold storage, which links the farm to retail, uh, it won't work. The total capacity is 25 million tons. 75% of the capacity is for potatoes. 96% of cold storage are from the private sector. Okay, either we encourage the private sector to do something about it, or we get the government to invest in it. But somewhere, this equation has to change. Uh, this equation is currently stillborn right now. And what we have is what I call the hot chain. The hot chain works very well in India with 12 million retail outlets. The cold chain doesn't work at all. Okay, it works zero. Okay, we have to develop the cold chain. And uh, the cold chain capacity we would require is about 60k uh, metric tons. So you can see the difference already. Okay, we need to scale up significantly. Technology trends in retail. The first is mobile coupons. Okay, no longer do you need to have expensive advertising. No longer do you need to have expensive couponing. Okay, through technologies like blue casting, anybody walking around any mall outside the shop, etc., you can get across to him through what I call digital coupons. Go back many years ago, about 200 years ago, coupons in newspapers started the process of people coming and asking for brands and getting one paisa off or 10 paisa off. The same thing will happen with digital now. Okay, digital coupons. Second, digitally empowered staff. I think today the staff would know much more about what's on the racks, what's to do with the product, what's to do with the service than ever before. Okay, this knowledge does not exist only with the owner of the shop or in an encyclopedia somewhere else. Okay, people on the shop floor are completely empowered with this information. Customers are getting very smart. With QR codes and things like that and smart apps, people can, while shopping, figure out you know, what's there, what's the content of the product, whether it's good, bad, uh, does it suit their lifestyle, does it suit their, you know, allergies, or whatever it is. Okay, so phones are playing a very important role in enabling consumers to choose what is right for them, in a sense, customizing the product virtually on the shop floor for themselves. Okay, that's another big trend we see. Uh, online, offline, okay, another big trend. Uh, one of the things we see in India specifically is a lot of people think that the whole online shopping is done from home. Not true at all. You speak to any of the uh, big players, Flipkart, any of these guys, online shopping is done from office. Believe it or not. It's done, done in two time zones. Okay? Between 11 and 12.30, just before the lunch break, and between 4 and 5, just before you go home. Okay? That's when it's done. So people are logging on, they've talked to somebody, somebody's bought a shirt, somebody's bought a computer, somebody's bought a camera, they log in and place the order. The only determinant they want is, they want it delivered within 24 hours. So it's a combination of physical and the virtual model. The real determinant of success is, can you deliver at my house within 24 hours? Okay, I will place the order now at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock or whatever it is. Okay, so, and we are seeing, unlike most people saying that standardized products sell in online, what we are seeing is, it's a range. At one level is standardized product. Pins, you know, paper, whatever it is. At another level, it's completely customized. This shirt, there are only five pieces of this shirt, only for me, nobody else has this, fine, let me order it. This sari, only one piece, let me order it. That's what's really happening. So there is a bipolarity there where it's deeply customized at one end or deeply commoditized at the other end. That's what we are seeing in online. That's how consumer decisions or purchase decisions are being simplified for the consumer. Customization and commoditization at one end. So and this is going to be big. Uh, and I believe many, many products will go this route. If you are in business, you need to have an online and a mobile business model. If you don't have it, you will suffer. Now, almost every single category is getting picked up because of the crunch of time uh, from a number of young people. That's the basic reason which is driving it.
technology is also changing the face of retail. Things like this will happen in some of the high-end outlets. This is Tesco's virtual wall in South Korea subway. You know, they asked me to speak about a few international trends. This is what it is. You can go check it. This is a complete digital wall. Pick it up, order, go ahead. This will happen here also. It's a matter of time. Because technology is one thing which will just spread very, very rapidly in whichever sector it uh, you know, permeates. Digital payment. The whole ecosystem needs to develop here. Uh, uh, the, I don't know uh, what you call it, your, the metro. What's the metro called here? It's, it's going to be called the metro. It's going to be called, okay. Bangalore is called Namma Metro. Somebody else calls it something else. So I was looking for that qualifier. The metro is far thinking. About two years ago, they came to us and said, we need an NFC payment system. Uh, so we are working with them from uh, Nokia to see uh, what can happen. Most metros in this country, most bus transport corporations in this country are saying, can we buy and pay tickets with a mobile phone? Okay, so how does this happen? You get up in Paris, there's a coordinate which helps you, you got up here. You get on somewhere, let's take an Ananagar or whatever it is, again with coordinates it tells you how much it is, you pay for that via your mobile phone and you get off. Okay, this will happen. But for this to happen, the whole ecosystem needs to come together. Okay, it'll be a larger play. And uh, this is going to be big as the price at which NFC is available. Today it's available only in phones which are 10 and 15,000 rupees. Tomorrow it, when it is available in 3,000 and 4,000 rupee phones, this will become the order of payment. So if you're going to pay your driver, you're going to pay your maid, you're going to pay anybody, you can just tap one phone to the other and make a payment. So the NFC combined with mobile money will be a very potent enough feature of retailing in the future. If you go back to retailing, credit cards ensured there was a spurt in retail sales because you didn't need to carry cash. Similarly, I believe digital cash, which is mobile money cash, will have the next spurt, especially in countries like India, where the credit card penetration is very, very low. I think India will go straight from a cash to a digital cash economy in the next decade. We will skip completely the whole generation of credit cards, just like we've skipped the whole generation of personal computers. India has just frog leaped the complete personal computer business. They've gone straight to mobiles and smartphones. The same thing will happen with digital cash. We will skip the credit card generation completely. So in summary, uh, India has 12 million retail outlets. That's a very big number compared to any country you have. Uh, the retail sector in India contributes a third to the GDP of this country. A uh, huge uh, generation of employment, basically because you require low investment, low space, low education, uh, and low capital to actually run this business. Uh, retail will be number one, followed by telecom, which will be number two. The combination of those two, the combination of digital money, digital tracking, and things like that in retail will provide a huge new fillip to uh, retail. What will change the face of retail going forward in India will be technology, will be power, the availability of power, will be rental space, very costly right now, and soft skills which are required. Okay, there's a lot of education to be done, a lot of training to be done in the area of soft skills for retail, but this will be one of the biggest employment avenues for this country uh, going forward. 